Bishop Spong defends, in his view, what I call the simple Simon theory of the resurrection. The basic idea of this theory is that the doctrine of the resurrection came about because Simon Peter couldn't explain properly the new understanding of Jesus' crucifixion that he had come to. According to Dr. Spong's theory, after Jesus' death, Simon went back to Galilee, where he struggled for months to understand Jesus' crucifixion. And finally, he came to see, in Bishop Spong's words, that, quote, the crucifixion was the final episode in the story of Jesus' life. It demonstrated that it is in giving life away that we find life, that it is in giving love away that we find love. Simon came to understand that God had taken the life of Jesus into the divine nature and that this life, now part of God, was available to them forever. But Simon was at a loss to explain his new insight to his fellow disciples. So he described it to them as, quote, unquote, Jesus' resurrection, even though he knew Jesus hadn't literally risen from the dead. And the others came to share Simon's insight and adopted his manner of speaking. So the bottom line is that the doctrine of the resurrection is the result of simple Simon's inability to express himself clearly. Now, What's funny about this theory is that even at face value, it doesn't even try to explain many of the phenomena that Bishop Spong himself said required explaining, such as the transformation of Jesus' family, like James and Jesus' brothers, the shift from Sabbath worship to Sunday worship, or the conversion of hostile Jewish leaders like Saul of Tarsus. So even at face value, the theory doesn't work. But even more importantly, the theory doesn't explain even what it sets out to explain, namely the origin of the disciples' belief in Jesus' resurrection. As N.T. Wright points out, Judaism had plenty of ways for talking about divine forgiveness, but declaring one's recently executed leader to be Messiah, or that he had in any sense been raised from the dead, was not one of them. On Bishop Spong's view, Wright says, there really was no early belief in resurrection at all since the word resurrection was never used to denote a non-bodily extension of life in a heavenly realm, however glorious. Spong, he says, has to postulate that at some point, someone began to use to denote this belief language which had never meant that before and continued not to mean it in either paganism, Judaism, or Christianity, and that other people who knew that resurrection meant bodies nevertheless went along with this usage. We might add to Wright's critique that uh, using such misleading resurrection language to express the new meaning of the crucifixion would have been utterly counterproductive in winning Gentile or Jewish converts because both of them denied that historical resurrections ever occur within history. Add to this the fact that the theory offers nothing to explain the empty tomb and the resurrection appearances and you find that really the theory doesn't explain anything. It's just not big and powerful enough. The simple Simon theory is just too simplistic. I think when you compare the evidence, the earliest disciples gave the right explanation when they said that God has raised him from the dead.